Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a good old Sephora haul. She's pretty big. Not a ton, a ton of items, but she was pretty, <laughs> pretty expensive. So if you want to see the new makeup items that I picked out that I will, of course, be testing over the next few weeks, then just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. Very exciting. Today's video is very kindly sponsored by Sephora. As always, thank you to you guys for giving me these opportunities to work with brands, especially like Sephora, since you guys know I spend thousands and thousands of dollars there. Yeah, so Sephora was kind enough to let me pick out some items that I've been wanting to test out. So of course, all of the products that I'm featuring today can be picked up at Sephora or Sephora.com. Recently, there's been a lot of new makeup items here and there popping up at Sephora, and I love to do Sephora product updates videos so you guys know what's worth it and what's it's not especially the spring savings event is coming up very soon and I've been wanting to try out the new makeup before that event happens so that I could help you save a little bit of money or spend it I don't know <laughs> anyways I'll tell you what's worth it and what's not so make sure before that happens that you sign up to become a member of Sephora's Beauty Insider program if you aren't already if you don't know how it works every time you purchase something you earn points and then those points can eventually be redeemed for cash and if you've been a member of Beauty Insiders like I have for a very long time. Eventually you may join me up at the Rouge tier and you get early access to certain items which I really really like and then of course my favorite part is saving a little bit of money at checkout all the time. So I will put the link down to that if you're interested in signing up because with the upcoming event you're going to need to be in the Beauty Insider program. Without further ado here we go. So the first item that I picked out is from Sephora Collection. I'm not as familiar with Sephora Collection. I'm thinking of maybe doing a dedicated video to Sephora collection very soon. So I thought I'd start out with the Best Skin Ever foundation. This is a brand new foundation that they launched. I picked mine up in the shade 15.5N. As far as a shade match for me, I feel like it's like a half shade too deep for me. Once it's all blended out on the skin, it is a pretty good match. But I do feel like it's a bit too fair, so it emphasizes texture a little bit more than a color that has a little bit more depth to it would. The foundation is made in France. It has a 12 month shelf life and the packaging looks really luxe it's like a nice glass bottle it gives you i would say a light to medium coverage it's very natural on the skin you can barely feel it it's quite lightweight so i really want to play around with this some more so far i'm thinking it's a great everyday foundation because of how lightweight it is but i'm gonna have to continue playing with this some more because i'm not quite sure yet my thoughts I've only been wearing it for like 20 minutes. The next item that I picked up, I fell into the buzz and I wanted to let you guys know my thoughts. I finally picked up the ABH Brow Freeze Brow Styling Wax. This has been quite popular and it really, I feel like it's glue for my eyebrows. It's a really cool gel consistency. It's like harder. It's not jelly like it looks. Ooh, but it leaves like a a sticky feeling behind so you guys know I'm not really a fan of the feather brow that's not my style I like to brush my hairs down but I will say I'm quite impressed with how well this worked I mean I gave myself some some like spidery brows first just to test out the capacity of the product and how it's intended to be used but I brush my brows down to kind of how I normally would like it I really like of course with this spoolie how it separates the brow hairs and it does feel like glue, like it pushes them brows down. I don't really love this feeling. It feels like glue to me, honestly, and I just kind of prefer a brow gel. This is going to take something to get used to, but as far as its intended purposes of gluing down your brows and also just for that stand up each straight feather brow trend this is really really great so maybe not my style not my kind of product but from what i can tell it works really nice i have gotten a lot of questions about westman atelier if you didn't know this is a new brand to sephora it is a luxury makeup brand you know it's a pretty penny so i did pick out some items to try so the first one i did try today this is the face trace contour stick i chose the cooler shade which is biscuit this is made in Italy and I've already got my dirty fingerprints all over it but it has that nice magnetic closure I've been I keep opening it the wrong way you guys but very luxe packaging and this from what I can tell so far is very nice I just use a sponge to apply it it spread 
beautifully. It's a very nice light shade as well. It keeps a very natural finish to the skin and I like that it's not too dark so it blends into the skin a lot easier and of course they do have a deeper shade if you do have a deeper complexion. So far so good. Like I said I've only used it once so I'm gonna have to dig into it some more but I'm pretty impressed by it so far. Also from the brand I didn't get to use these today so I will do in the near future a video trying out everything else that I didn't try in today's video as well as some other new products because I am very very excited excited to try the Vital Skin Foundation Stick. I'm worried. I feel like this shade's a little bit too light and yellow for me. I got Atelier 2. I've been having like a, a, a skin identity crisis because for a while I was so good at picking out my shade online. I, I, good or lucky, I don't know, but I've, I've been pretty lucky with that. And I feel like I've lost all sense of my skin tone because I'm so fair. All of a sudden, none of my foundations that once match me. I, I guess I'm just not going outdoors enough. I've always had a little bit of color to me just because of my job and working outside and I would run outside. There's been no sun. It's been too cold. I haven't been going out. So I feel like this is the lightest I've ever been. So I've, I think I've overcompensated with this. I picked Atelier 2 because none of my foundations were matching me. I don't know. You know, actually, my, I don't know. I don't know, but anyways, now I'm picking out all foundations that are too light for me after always picking foundations that were too dark for me, so I just don't know, but I got that and I'm really excited. Same Lux packaging. And then the last item that I picked out from Miss Westman Atelier is the Baby Cheeks Blush Shade. I picked out the shade Petal. I haven't used this yet, but this looks like a beautiful pinky rose shade that I'm really gonna enjoy. Cream bronzers and cream blushes are my favorite for a very natural skin-like look. Not so much highlighters, I just prefer a powder highlighter, so I did skip on the Westman Atelier highlights, but I've also heard good things about it, so I don't know. I'm rethinking my decisions, might pick that up the next time it goes on sale, but that's what I picked up from Westman Atelier and what I'm going to be testing in the near future. And this product, I just wanted to know. Product knowledge enthusiasts, I just like to know about formulas. So I had to pick up the NARS Air Matte Blush in the shade Orgasm. I'm still figuring out the best way to apply it. It's like a like a dry souffle, moussey kind of texture. This doesn't have a lot of pigmentation. I'm wearing out my cheeks. Honestly, I feel like the color kind of disappeared. Uh, hold on. I used a sponge to apply it at first, but I'm thinking maybe like a, a brush might be a little bit better. It doesn't provide too much of like a glowy finish like most creams do, which I actually appreciate because I think as time goes on and the product gets worn a little bit more, the oils are gonna come through a little bit more. Um, so I kind of appreciate how it's a little bit more on the matte side. Maybe not completely matte, but like a soft matte. Oh, it's called an air matte blush, duh. Okay, that's why. Not sold on it yet. It's a pretty color and it seems really nice for natural makeup days, but I'm gonna have to test the wear time on that one. I also picked up from Kosas the Cloud Set Baked Setting and Smoothing Powder. I really like Kosas. I really like their packaging. I got the shade Feathery. So this is a sheer light medium. And so far, I, th I think I like it. I like how lightweight it applied. It's called a featherweight powder. It does feel like a, a very light featherweight. And I just lightly set the center of my face. Again, like I said, I don't know what's wrong with my skin today. It's like extra dry or maybe it's the products. I don't know if it's the powder. So I'm going to have to do some, um, some investigating there. But it does really feel very lightweight. So I really do think I like it. I'm gonna have to test it with products that I'm more familiar with, but if you're looking for a very sheer lightweight powder, I mean, this one is beautiful. I think I like it. Again, I've only worn it for 20 minutes, but I think I like it. The next product I got, I couldn't stand. I had to get it because I love powder foundations, even though I don't even wear them anymore. I used to wear powder foundations every single day for work, but I refuse to with a mask. Nothing makes me feel more dirty than foundation on a mask. But I had to try out the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. 
this guy, oh, everybody's going to Italy now. I love it, made in Italy. I picked up the shade 230, which is the shade I wear in the foundation. I haven't tried it yet, haven't touched it yet, can't say anything about this, so I will definitely have to update you in like a Sephora updates video or something of that nature, but I'm really excited about a new powder foundation. Powder foundation is now currently trending and I'm so excited about that because I've been preaching that powder foundations are amazing for a while now and I'm happy to see them getting some love. I picked up two eyeshadow quads. So, <clears throat> as you know, or you may not know, my mom and I, I do plan on one day moving out of my parents' house when the world decides to change, when Jose's immigration stuff goes through, all of that. So, we're basically going through a divorce project process with our makeup collections because before we would share we would buy items together and I am planning on moving out so I've been purchasing items that I feel like I would miss and that we can't split so I did pick up a Charlotte Tilbury quad in the Queen of Glow I had to have it it's one of Charlotte Tilbury's best it's one of the best formulas. I get asked a lot what quad should I start out with from Charlotte Tilbury. I have to say this one because the formulation is really unmatched and these colors are just phenomenal and I just would feel like a phony not having this in my collection so I did decide to purchase this or repurchase it whatever so that it could come with me because I need to have it in my collection so if you're interested in Charlotte Tilbury, this is definitely a formula that is worth the money. And not every single one of her quads are worth the money, but this one is. And then, as I slowly grow my Tom Ford collection, I picked up one that was highly recommended by you guys. And it's just fallen to the back burner, but eventually I was able to pick it up. I decided to pick up Disco Dusk as I grow my Tom Ford collection. And like I said, you guys were like, why don't you have Disco Dust yet? And I went, or Disco Dust, excuse me, I went through a bit of a roller coaster applying this one. And the fact that I went through a roller coaster, does that make it worth the $88? That's up for you to decide. But this shade, beautiful, very, very pigmented. This shade right here is the one where it sent me through a bit of a roller coaster. It's one of those formulas where it's like, you can't tell if it's just really blending amazingly or if it's disappearing so i couldn't really get the depth that this has like the pigmentation wouldn't stay when i would apply it to my eye and i would blend it out it would go to a really soft gray haze as you can see what is on my eyelid right now it's the kind of color where if you put it down and you don't blend it out it's gonna stay in that depth but if you blend it out either it blends out so good or it disappears. I'm still trying to decide. I'm not sure. <laughs> so either it blends amazingly or it disappears. That's up for debate. This shade right here, really beautiful shimmer shade. It's a little, not necessarily a shimmer, I would say more so of a satin. It has a soft sheen to it. Um, so when I first applied these three, I was like, eh, this is this okay, it's fine, Tom Ford. But then I got to, I guess, the Disco Dust shade, the really glittery one, and I mean, you can see the impact that it has on the eye. Tom Ford does a really good job with this formula. I swear, it's his secret sauce to thinking his palettes are amazing, because I was like, eh, before with the base shades, and then you put this on top, and you're like, whoa! So, I mean, she really cute. I really like it, so... Contrary to the Charlotte Tilbury, while this one, I like it for sure. There are definitely ones that I would recommend first before picking this one up, if that makes sense. The next product that I got is from Miss Natasha Denona. This is the I Need a Nude Lip Crown. Crown. Crayon. I got the shade NP1 Natasha. So this looks like it would be the lightest one, and I was a little bit worried about the depth that I was going to get, but it actually has more depth than it seems when you see in the application. So far, what I can tell, it's very, very creamy. So if you are all about the cream, the slip and slide on the lips, this is going to apply so easily. I can't speak on wear time right now, obviously, uh, but it seems to have set down already. So Hopefully wear time is pretty good on it. I really like the colors that she has and these are 
very creamy, just like her lipstick, so they're going to pair very well together. And I really like the shade Natasha. Now, if you go on the website, you can see that there are other lipstick shades of hers that she would recommend with the lip liners. And I just felt like, as a huge Natasha Denona fan, I needed to try this formula. Otherwise, like, I'm fake. Like, I needed to know. So I picked this one up, and I'm very happy with the color. I think it's a nice neutral pink, leaning a little bit more cool. It's going to be quite a versatile color with a lot of different lipsticks. So I like it. If you saw my number one best sellers at Sephora video, I picked up a Dior lipstick for that because it was the number one best seller. I had to do it and I, bought, I got another one. I had to. I just, I really like the way they smell. They smell like girl on balls and I like that. <laughs> so we have the Saint Germain color. It's a satin finish and this shade was a lot deeper than it looked online. I opened it and I was like whoa that's dark so I tried to just kind of like pat it on my lips and lightly spread it out so it still has some depth to it but side note it looks really good with the disco dust eye quad from Tom Ford. Like this is a look. It's a cute look. Um, so I really like this one. Um, I like the color. It's more pigmented than the Dan Sante that I got before, which was like a really light nude, and I wasn't getting a ton of pigment from it. She, this one got pigment. And not everybody's cup of tea as far as color. Not really appropriate for the upcoming spring, if you care about that. But if you like cool tone looks, it's really nice. I just wanted to get a color that wasn't a nude peach shade, which is what I always go for. So I have a billion nude peaches in my collection. So now I have this color, which I like. I don't know how often I'm gonna wear it though, but it's nice. Anyways, that is all I have for my haul. Those are all of the items that I picked out and that I'm going to be testing over the next few weeks and updating you guys on. So of course, make sure you guys are subscribed to get those updates. Again, a huge thank you to Sephora for sponsoring this video and allowing me to bring my amazing subscribers these products. I, okay, that's it. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good one.